Welcome to my first UK drive on BMW's facelifted 2024 X5M competition. I was actually lucky enough to get my hands on one of these last December out in Germany and Austria. Although that particular German press car was on winter tyres and the weather during the three days that I had it was absolutely dreadful. And I remember saying in the video that I'd hoped to get my hands on one of these back home in the UK on summer tires. And this particular one is on Michelin's Pilot Sport 4S. BMW facelifted the current G Series X5 range at the back end of 2023, including the flagship X5M. And the majority of the external updates on this facelifted X5M are around the front end. We've got an entirely new bumper, we have new grills, new headlight design. And I think as a result, it looks absolutely stunning, especially in this car's Marina Bay Blue. There are some changes around the back end as well. And we'll have a look at those shortly. One of these will set you back 125,000 pounds. And that's the base price, which is an awful lot of money, no matter which way you look at it. But four years ago, almost exactly to the day, I got my hands on a pre-facelift X5M competition that was also in Marina Bay Blue. And that car at the time retailed at 110,000 pounds base price. So it's gone up 15,000 pounds in four years, which is a big increase. But actually in terms of percentage, it's a much smaller increase than the rest of the BMW lineup. But this being a press car, well, it does have a lot of options, including the £15,000 ultimate package, bringing its on-the-road retail price to just under £143,000. Before we talk about what's actually under the bonnet, I have to make a small apology. That German press car that I had a few months ago, I actually said had the outgoing S63 engine in it. I did mention in the video that it sounded slightly different and it did sound slightly different because it wasn't an S63. In fact, it's the new S68, which is essentially the same size and the same layout. So it's a 4.4 litre V8 twin turbo, but it's also essentially an all new engine. It's the same unit we'll find in cars like the current XM, in fact, it's the same unit that was in that recent X6 M60i that I had, but in that car it was detuned. In this car, you get the full fat, 625 horsepower, 750 newton meters of torque. It also has a mild hybrid system connected to it. All of that runs through the familiar ZF 8-speed automatic gearbox and BMW's M xDrive system. They say or claim this car will do the 0-62 sprint in just 3.9 seconds, which is actually one-tenth of a second slower than the pre-facelift, which on paper seems a bit bizarre because same power, same torque figure, albeit a new motor, but yet it's a little bit slower. And the reason for that is the LCI or the facelift car that we see here has increased in weight by almost 100 kilos. I think most of that has to do with the mild hybrid system. We'll hopefully be testing out that claim 0 to 60 time a bit later, depending on the weather. In fact, we might do it whether it's raining or whether it's dry, just to see, because it definitely doesn't feel any slower in the week that I've had this, but maybe on paper, it will be a fraction. Before we jump in the car and take it out on the road, I just wanted to show you the updates that have happened around the back end of the car. And in fact, they mostly consist of these new rear LED tail lights. To look at, maybe not night and day different to the pre-facelift, but when you unlock the car, and when you lock the car, 
I think it's just a really nice addition. You can imagine how good that looks when you walk up to this at night. And the last thing to talk about is a feature that I've talked about in previous X5M competition videos. And I'm glad to see that it's still available on this latest facelift model. So if we open the split fold tailgate, top bit opens with the key, the bottom bit with the press of a button, not only do you get a really nice comfortable bench to sit on, in fact, Lou and I sat on this and had a picnic the other day. We parked down near a river. It was really pleasant. We've also got a little bit of shelter from all the rain we've been getting recently. When you lift this up, you've got massive amounts of underfloor storage, but none of that compares to potentially the best and most magical button in the automotive industry. And that button, that button's over here. In fact, there are two buttons, but it's the one at the bottom. When you press that, the parcel shelf folds back. The boot opens and that electronically disappears into the boot floor and it closes again, leaving you a lovely flat loading bay and no parcel shelf. I know it is potentially the most ridiculous option ever. It probably weighs loads and in years to come is gonna go wrong and probably cost you a fortune to fix. But <laughs> at the same time, you have to take your hats off to BMW and their engineers for producing and offering us such an option. I absolutely love that. It gets me each and every time. Before we start the actual road test part of this video, let's test out its claimed acceleration figures because the sort of customer that's looking at an X5M is quite a punchy sort of customer and they probably want to know how fast it actually will do the 0-60 sprint. BMW say it will do the 0-62 sprint in 3.9 seconds, which if you remember from the intro is one tenth of a second slower than the car or the model that it replaces. In terms of settings, well, I brought up the setup menu. I'm in Sport Plus, so that's basically the throttle response or engine response. Chassis is in comfort because this is fairly stiffly sprung anyway, which we'll talk about once we get out on the road. And I think the softer or more supple the chassis is or the suspension is, the more grip we're gonna get off the line. Steering and comfort, I much prefer comfort over sport in the majority of modern BMWs. Brake in sport, that's not relevant, hopefully, in this particular test. And the MX drive system I have in four wheel drive. I believe that still sends more power and torque to the rear axle, but it's not as extreme as four wheel drive sport, where I think that sends up to 80% to the rear axle. I have all of the traction control and stability control switched off. I'm in manual because with the majority of BMW M cars, if you activate launch control, it will do the shifting for you to get you to that 60 mile an hour as quick as humanly possible. My race box mini is now ready to go. My left foot is hard down on the brake, right foot on the floor, launch control active. Here we go. Oh my God, <laughs> and there's 60. Wow. <laughs> there wasn't a millimeter of slip. There was no hesitation, it was gone. 3.54 seconds, 260 miles an hour. That is very, very fast, but it's not as fast as the pre-LCI that I tested not far from here, so in the UK, about two years ago. That managed consistent 3.35 runs. I think it was 3.37, 3.36, and the last one was 3.35. So that's two tenths of a second quicker than this car. We'll circle back and try it one more time, just for good measure, but I think that's fast enough. Ready and lined up for the second attempt. Again, left foot hard down on the brake, right foot on the accelerator, launch control active, here we go. That's just crazy. Feels a little bit faster. It's not a little bit faster. 3.57, I think the first one was 3.54, so more or less identical. 
very, very consistent. Exactly what I found with the pre-LCI. It would probably do that 10 times in a row. Seeing as I've already done a first drive video on this particular model, albeit in ice and snowy conditions, I thought I'd approach this video slightly different. I've had this car for just over a week and a few days ago I posted a picture of it on my Instagram and I asked my Instagram friends and followers what they wanted to know about this car and I received about 120 questions and comments and ideas. So I'll get onto them shortly but before I do let's give this car a quick once over starting with the interior. What's changed? What's new? What's it like in here? Well, firstly, it's very spacious and it's a lovely, lovely place to sit and spend time in, just like the pre-facelift X5M was. And recently I got my hands on that beautiful X5 30D, which was also a facelifted car and had a very similar interior. But this one has just gone up another notch. This interior is individual ivory merino leather. And then we have individual ivory Alcantara headlining, which on paper and on first sort of visuals, it's maybe a little bit too much. But during my eight or nine days with this car, the weather has been gray and a bit miserable, like it has been for the past two or three months in the UK. And I tell you what, spending time in this car on those gray, miserable days has been joyous because there is as much light in here as humanly possible. Of course, that has helped massively with this beautiful, massive pan sunroof. The front section does tilt and open or completely slide back and open. And that just opens up everything in here. The combination of the ivory color and the pan sunroof, even on a dull day like today, well, it feels light, airy and spacious in here. And I say it all the time, but if you are using your X5 or X5M as a family wagon and you have rear seat passengers, it's definitely worth getting because this couldn't be more polar opposite to that X5M that I had out in Germany because, well, that didn't have a pan roof. <laughs> it had black headlining, might have been Alcantara, but either way, it was black, very dark interior. And if you're sitting in the back of that, it would probably feel 20, 30% smaller than in the back of this. Another highlight and something I talk about a lot with BMWs that have them in are these seats. First time I saw them was in a 2018 F90 M5 non-competition and since then, well, BMW have used them in a number of their bigger chassis models. I absolutely love them. I love the way they look. I love the way they feel. They're so comfortable. They're so supportive. The only negative is they are big units. If you had these in, say, my M3, you'd have absolutely no legroom in the back. But thankfully, in this car, you've got lots of legroom in the front and the back. And these particular ones, well, they're memory electric adjustable. They've got so many different adjustments, it's unbelievable. They are heated, they are ventilated, they will give you a massage, I'm not kidding. They're just wonderful. And the last thing to talk about, aside from the curved display, which I'm kind of sick of talking about because all BMWs have that now, it's not exactly new, is the steering wheel. The steering wheel itself is the same, uh, you still have the M1 and M2 preset buttons here, which basically bring up your favorite drive settings. But it comes now with these lovely carbon paddles, which we first saw in the G80 M3 and the G82 M4. You now get them in the M2 as well, and you get them in the X5M and presumably the X6M. Um, they just look good, they feel good. They're much nicer than the standard paddles that you get in lesser models. Um, and yeah, definitely something that was worth talking about because I believe they are an upgrade.
ride quality. Well, bearing in mind we're on 21 and 22 inch staggered wheels with massively wide tires, it's actually not too bad. You never really come out of comfort unless you're really pushing on and then you'd go up to sport. I haven't gone near Sport Plus because I can imagine it's probably like they replace the springs with pieces of wood, but this is two and a half tons, so it needs that kind of support. But it rides, to me anyway, off my muscle memory, rides better than BMW's XM, which isn't hard because the XM's biggest downfall, as far as I'm concerned, is its ride quality. But it's definitely not horrendous, it's not too bad, and it feels a little bit better than the pre-LCI car. But once again, I haven't driven a pre-LCI for about 18 months, so I could be telling porkies with that, but I've definitely not found it to be uncomfortable in here, but it's nowhere near as good as, let's say, that X530D that had the optional air suspension. That was like a magic carpet along this road. This definitely is nowhere near that, and you can't get it with air suspension. The flip side of that slightly firm ride is this two and a half ton SUV's handling. Now to experience that to its fullest, we're gonna bring up my M1 preset, which is engine sport plus, so best throttle response essentially, we get the most out of that wonderful S68 engine. Chassis is in sport, as we just talked about, you definitely don't need anything stiffer than that. Maybe if you took this on a track day, which would be comical, you'd go up to Sport Plus, but otherwise I just can't see why you would. Steering, left it in comfort, it gives you a tiny bit of feel when you go in Sport, it just removes every kind of feel. Brake, Sport, just gives you a bit more power, a bit more assistance with the brake. Four wheel drive Sport, so sending more power and torque to the rear axle. And I'm in manual, so I can use these wonderful paddles, got all the traction control systems, etc. switched off. Of course, it's just started to rain, but that really doesn't matter in this car. <laughs> it's just got so much grip and potential. It's annoyingly good. It's annoyingly amazing. The way it digs into the road, the way it rides everything. In fact, the ride quality gets better the faster you go on this car because it blows through the travel a bit more. It loads up those shocks, it loads up the springs. And it seems when it's in its travel, when it's sitting in its travel, it rides better. And that makes more sense, it makes good sense. But it's not until you start pushing on that you realize the ride quality, that sort of sharp edge that it has at slower speeds disappears and it really starts to flow along your favorite road. We're coming up to a great little twisty section, which is far more M2, M3, M4 than X5M, but let's just see how it goes. Accelerate in, down a gear, down another gear, turn in, loads of grip. <laughs> we'll leave it in third because we've got all the torque in the world on the way out of here. Gee. Okay, I better come off the throttle there. It has so much thrust, so much pace. We know that it's a little bit slower than the older version, but it really doesn't feel it. You don't sit here thinking or wishing you had more power or more go. It really doesn't feel lacking in that department whatsoever. It's just mind blowing. And in fact, while we're talking about its power, we know on paper it is a little bit slower, but I think probably due to the mild hybrid system, or maybe because this is an all new S68 engine, it definitely picks up from lower revs better. Now the S63 never sort of um, suffered from that, always had loads of low down torque. But this, for instance, we're at 35 miles an hour in fifth gear, put my foot down 40, 45, 50, 60 miles an hour in fifth gear. <laughs> It just goes in any gear, it goes, it pulls. And as a result, it's a very nice car to just cruise around in. You don't have to be pushing on, you can, and it is fun, and it does things that just shouldn't happen. But when you do cruise around, you knock it back, it's just effortless, it does everything so easy. And actually, 
I've averaged about 22 and a half MPG in the eight days, nine days that I've had this, which is really impressive. I seem to remember the pre-LCI with the S63, which was a bit lighter. I would be lucky to average more than about 18, 17, 18 in that one. So fuel economy has got better. Let's get on to a handful of the brilliant questions that were sent in via my Instagram page. The first one I picked out is from JFO Marks, and he's asked, how does this compare to Porsche's KN Turbo with the GT package? Now, I'm going to assume that he means the KN Turbo E Hybrid with the GT package, which is the only one we can now get in the UK. And it's a car that I was lucky enough to test at the back end of last year out in Spain on track and on the road. Made a video about it. Very, very impressive car. I think cost wise, it's going to be a higher than this, especially as I assume you'd get a bit of a deal on an X5M, whereas you probably wouldn't with a KN Turbo. But if we put cost aside, well, maybe what were they, 740 horsepower? So over 100 horsepower more than this. I think it was a similar sort of weight, maybe a little bit heavier. The KN had the benefit of having an electric range only whereas this one doesn't, this has a mild hybrid system, which just helps with sort of turbo fill and all the rest of it, or torque fill. So I guess in that aspect, the KN is better because you can run around town in electric only. Can't remember the range, was it 25, 30 miles, something like that, which is enough if you're just pootling around town or going to the shops and back. So it has that up its sleeve, which this car doesn't. It handled exceptionally well. It rode very well, although it was on Spanish roads and tarmac, which definitely better than UK roads and tarmac. Um, where, in my opinion, it, that particular model falls a little bit short is you could only get it in the coupe style. So really it's kind of an X6M competition competitor and not an X5M because this is far more practical. I think it's better looking than the KN Coupe at least. But in terms of comparing them both, it's very difficult to say. I would like to drive them both back to back along the same bit of road in the UK. I can't really fault either. Porsche's got better ride quality. The BMW is definitely more spacious and arguably has a better cabin. I don't know. I don't know about that actually because the, the face of KN is also extremely nice on the inside. Next question is from my good friend Shaheen out in Australia and he's asked, is it a better choice than an M3 Touring fully spec for family duties? Well, in terms of cost, there's a huge difference between the two fully spec M3 Touring, aside from let's say carbon ceramics, you're looking at oh, about 105 grand, whereas one of these 145 grand. So it's a fair chunk more expensive. In terms of practicalities, there's no getting away from the fact that this is bigger. It's more practical. It's a nicer cabin to spend time in. There's more space in here. You can get a sunroof. You can't get a sunroof, at least in the UK, on the M3 Touring. So it just feels bigger in here. It is a lot bigger. The seats are probably more comfortable. Rear bench, very similar, I'd say, but if you've got rear occupants, kids or whatever, they're going to enjoy the back of an X5 probably more than a 3 Series Touring. Yeah, you've also got uh, like adapters in the back of the seat to put um, iPad holders or accessories in, more charging ports, more things, more storage in here, everywhere in the front and the back the boots bigger. Um, so in terms of practicality, the X5 is going to be better without a doubt. But in terms of handling and driving dynamics, the M3 is still better than this. And ultimately, probably a little bit quicker, but there's not much between them. 
the M3 definitely doesn't have the torque that this car has. And I think if you're fully laden with family and luggage and dogs, um, this would probably deal with the weight better than the six cylinder S58. Next question is from Jamie D. Smith, 1981. This or the XM? And I'm glad that Jamie's asked that question because it is something that I naturally wanted to cover anyway in this video. As you probably know, I'm not the world's biggest XM fan. In fact, I don't think many people are throughout the world because they really have struggled to sell them anywhere, including places like the Middle East where you think an XM would do well. It just seems to have too many flaws and is a lot of money um, for something that doesn't seem to excel in many departments. Ignoring the looks, I mean, especially front end. Front end on this is probably the best in the current BMW lineup. Front end on the XM, well, I don't know, I'll leave you to judge that. Some people do like it, but I'm not the biggest fan. As we talked about earlier on, this, I would say, arguably has better ride quality. It handles miles better than the XM. The XM feels like it's maybe a ton heavier than this, and it's not. It's 150, 200 kilos heavier, so no idea how that car feels so heavy, and this one somehow doesn't. This is a chunk faster in a straight line, even though the XM on paper has more power and more torque. This is definitely quicker. I don't need to look at stats or figures for that. I can tell you categorically this is faster. And yeah, it's a chunk cheaper. It's a, it's a no brainer for me. Um, the only positives of the XM, a bit similar to the KN Turbo e-hybrid, is the XM can be run as a proper hybrid. It's a plug-in hybrid. You can charge it at home overnight and it will give you electric only range, which this car won't do. And that's the one benefit of the XM, if you like, that you just don't get with this car. We're now pulling up here in fifth. I was in sixth, it was losing a bit of pace, so I went down to fifth at about 30 miles an hour in a very steep incline, and it just pulled me up. Just the torque levels are ridiculous. Anyway, talking of torque levels, I am talking too much. What is my verdict on this 2024 BMW X5M competition? Well, it's probably no surprise to any of you out there that I really rate it. It is very close to the ultimate package. It seems to do everything very, very well. And yes, it is 125,000 pounds base, which is an awful lot of money. But for someone who can afford that, it is a brilliant, brilliant car. And let's face it, you see a lot of very expensive four-wheel drives and SUVs out there, especially from the likes of Range Rover, etc. And as far as I'm concerned, this walks all over any kind of sporty Range Rover and you could probably get insurance for it. And it will start when you jump in it in the morning. It's not gonna go wrong as often as a JLR product probably would. I've really, really enjoyed my time in this car. I really enjoyed our time in that black one out in Germany and Austria. And I remember thinking when we're out there, wow, this car really does do everything without any fuss, you know? <laughs> Winter tires on, it was the ultimate snowplow, go everywhere car, always felt safe in it. Back here in the UK, back on summer tires, and I feel exactly the same way on dry or wet tarmac, doesn't matter. It will take you there, just does everything with so much ease. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. As always, please give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave any comments and questions below. And I'll see you at another video very, very soon. Cheers.